All right, so we are here today with the amazing Rachel. And uh, Rachel is super, super inspirational, I hope. I can only hope I've been as so somehow inspiring to her, but I know she's been really, really inspiring to me. She was a client in the Accelerate Your Ambitions program. And she is a great example of someone who was in a job and wanted to start a side hustle, wanted to shift into her own business. And what does that actually look like concretely when it comes to balancing that, you know, income wise and balancing that with a very, very, very busy full-time job. So I will pass it over to Rachel. Can you just introduce yourself? Who are you? Where do you live? And um, what kind of a business have you started? Hey, Dahlia, thank you so much for making time to meet with me today. It is always exciting to see you, and I'm just honored to be able to help people find your incredible business because it really was the starting point for helping me identify and strategically move forward with my vocation. So I live in the Pacific Northwest. I'm in Bellingham, Washington. It's uh, just north of Seattle. And I've been out here for four years. And my background has been one of a typical like Swiss Army knife. I have had a lot of experiences in a number of different arenas. So I have a degree in English and religious studies, and I have worked in the banking and insurance industry. I've worked in software. I've worked in marketing, um, SEO, all different types of things. And I'm in my mid thirties now. And what was so painful to me was that I am so ambitious. I'm so dedicated and I'm successful at whatever endeavor I embark on, but it left me wanting. I am somebody who loves to help people and I want to be able to use my myriad life experiences to help activate others um, and get them out of the things that hold them back. And when I found you, it was April of last year, so 2021, and the pandemic was hard for me. My most recent work has been in the um, software industry. So I started out as an implementation consultant years ago, and um, about four years ago, I segued into customer success, and I positioned myself within the company to become, you know, subject matter expert in our products. And I found a little niche within onboarding because I'm able to connect with people and help them overcome obstacles to achieve success. Um, I've been involved in mergers and acquisitions, all of these things. But what felt so unsettling to me was the software industry, while it gave me the opportunity to exercise these skills that I enjoy and am passionate about helping people and specifically helping people overcome obstacles, um, it is not built in a way that allows me to be my most authentic self. And so I was moving through this corporate setting and I felt like I was constantly being pigeonholed and fighting for my value. Like, I know who I am and I know what I bring to the table. Why is it that I'm constantly fighting for a seat at the table? I felt like I was having to defend my place there. And we were going through massive transition as many companies are in this you know, strange post COVID arena that we find ourselves in. So we were going through you know, acquisitions and volatile, volatile change, huge team changes, structural changes. We now have a different CEO and, and executives. And, you know, I navigated my way through this. But when I reached out to you, I found you through Facebook. It was a Facebook ad. And I was lying in bed one night and just in tears, I hit the critical mass in my heart where I was like, I am in so much pain in this setting. I feel like I'm not showing up as my authentic self. I'm not impacting and supporting and helping people to the degree I know I can, but I have no idea where to start. I don't want to be stuck in this corporate lifestyle that feels so incredibly depleting to me. I need help. And so what was incredible, this ad just spoke to me. Your words and your story resonated 
and I felt truth in my heart. I was like, this is it. This is the kind of assistance that I need. And so I took that first step, you know, I wiped my tears and I, I submitted that um, request to do a discovery call with your team. And I made sure to set it up quickly. I was like, now I need help now. <laughs> so let me move forward with this as quickly as I can. Um, I had the discovery call with your team that weekend. So just a few days later. And as I was sitting there going through that experience, it just felt like the confirmation. This is the kind of program that will give me the strategic actionable tools and the support that I need to jump from a job to a vocation, which is where I am now. Thank you so much for that recap. Yeah, that's, inc that's incredible. And it, it's really um, one thing that resonated with me the most is being an ambitious person, being good at a lot of different things, you can get pigeonholed into many different areas and you can do them and you can excel at them. But then what, what is the right thing for you? You know, not just helping everyone else with all their tasks and various types of corporations and things like that, but then coming to that point where you realize, wait a minute, I forgot to pay attention to what, what do I actually want in my life? And yeah. you know, that incorporates all kinds of different types of wants you might have, including the type of work and the type of schedule and the type of people you want to work with and all those kinds of things. So you can either decide, well, it's fine. I'm, I'm pretty successful. I'm doing well. Let me just focus on enjoying my weekends, et cetera, doing my best. Or you can say, wait, that's not okay that I am, that I have the, so much potential that I have so much to offer and I'm a good person and I want to help and I want to make an impact and that I'm not feeling the way I want to feel on one hand and on the other hand I'm also not helping others or making an impact to the extent that I could be and yeah decide it's really a decision am I okay with not making that impact and also not feeling the way that I would ideally want to feel um or deciding that I'm just going to kind of say whatever that's that's life that's fine and and get on with it yeah and that what you describe um that decision point am i going to be complacent in a mm -hmm. situation that is not really allowing me to show up as myself and that is depleting me because it's using my skills in ways that yes serve others but not in the way that i meant to show up it's mm -hmm. it's exhausting it just becomes this cry, this inner cry. And it's like, there are people that go decades and they just push it down. And mm -hmm. I knew that that wasn't going to be enough for me. My two core values that drive me as a human being are authenticity and growth. And I was growing in a corporate environment, but it was not authentic to me. And mm -hmm. I felt like I could only keep that charade up so yeah. long. You know, there's growth in anything. You can always find the growth, but at a certain point, you're kind of what's that expression like grasping, grasping for twigs or something? Like you're, yeah, yes, you're growing. But is this? Have you chosen that growth? Are you growing in the direction that you want, or are you just learning more things that to you don't really matter? Because right. you can say you're growing anywhere, but you need to make sure that you're learning the things that you want to be learning you can't learn yeah. everything in the world so you need to make sure you're really learning the things that make you um, more and more excited for every single day that's coming forward oh today i get to learn this today i get to learn to grow in that way in this way and not just yeah. oh yeah I, I guess i'm growing i guess i learned something today that i didn't know yesterday yeah <laughs> and it it ends up just feeling like a slow death um, when you are in an environment that doesn't really align with or resonate with what you know in your heart, mm -hmm. you can keep showing up indefinitely, but you continue to feel more and more depleted. And that mm -hmm. was the, the critical point um, when I found you. It was like, I can't do this anymore because it's affecting my well-being. It's affecting my health. It's affecting my my desire to show up and that's not who i am i enjoy working hard i enjoy supporting and helping people but i want to do it in a way where i'm empowered and i am not feeling like a victim of circumstance which is mm -hmm. exactly how i felt so i would encourage anyone who's considering 
jumping like this, listen to that cry of your heart and invite someone in. And Dahlia's program, it you're fantastic. You were exactly what I needed at that moment in time. And it was so critical to me branching out and really finding my voice. Um, what I loved about Accelerate Your Ambitions was that there is the one-on-one -on -one component where I was able to connect with you through video messaging and emails and get the support that I needed because I felt like I was doing this all alone and it was way too overwhelming. Um, but also the group sort of component, the fact that you are walking this journey with other people because it's just, it's true to life. Um, when you are in a moment of suffering, you feel isolated and you're like, I'm stuck. I'm stuck here. I'm never going to get out. And does anyone else know what this feels like? But in the group sessions, we were able to take what we were learning from your program, share our experiences and bounce ideas off of one another that I found to be very encouraging and inspiring. Yeah, that's really, that's really, really helpful because when you are in your life, as much as you try to take that third, um, you know, that bird's eye view and look at yourself, you're still in it. You have all these pressures of your job, et cetera. And it's really, really hard for you to figure out what steps to take, because I, I, I think a lot of it is just all the pressure that's on top of you. And the fact that you're, you're in your life, you have things to deliver to life you're used to. There's all this uncertainty and all of that can be really it can really entrap you. And I think that's part of the trap that keeps people where they are as well. It's not really, it's, it's very difficult to step outside of yourself, even if you're the kind of person who's really good at that. Like I'll even say for myself, I'm constantly stepping outside myself, looking at the global bird's eye view. But when it comes to making my own decisions for things, um, I will say it's not as easy to look at it in an, as an objective a way as when I look at my clients' lives and what they're doing. And I can think of examples and go, okay, this is what you need to do. The path is clear, right? But for myself, yes. I also need to reach out and talk to other people and get other kinds of guidance um, a lot of the time. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And this is why coaches have coaches and counselors have counselors. We are not able to do for ourselves what mm -hmm. we're able to do for other people. We are, um, we are on this journey together and we need mm -hmm. insight from other people, we need that ability to reflect. And what I loved about being able to bring you this mess that I was in, it's like, okay, <laughs> here's my skill set, Dahlia. Yeah, here's, yeah. here's what I'm passionate about. Help me put the pieces together because I, I'm seeing things, but I'm not able to reflect mm -hmm. it back to myself. And that was the gift of what you gave me in this program. I, I did the work and I showed up and you were able to help me partner my passions with my skills and help me create a beta program that I was able to, you know, really tap into the resources of my existing environment. So, you know, you were help, able to help me figure out, it's not just that I like to help people. Mm -hmm. What is it specifically? I like to help people overcome obstacles. Well, what kind of people? Mm -hmm. The people who are suffering because they don't feel like they know who they really are and they're not showing up in a way that feels fulfilling. I want to walk with them specifically through that process. So in helping me launch that beta program last year, it gave me the confidence to continue expanding and to get over that hump because when you start internally aligning with what matters to you, that doubt and fear creeps in. And it's so easy to just be immobilized. If I had not invited you in, um, I could have stayed there for months going, okay, I, I'm getting a sense of what I want to do. How, how do I move forward? And how do I have the, the confidence? You and the group were able to reflect back to me like, no, you're actually very good at this. Yeah, yes, yeah. people would pay you for this. Yes, this yeah. is real. You're not crazy. <laughs> <laughs> no, exactly. And I think it's it's a really good point because so many people these days are quitting their jobs. You know, there's the great resignation and they all want to do something where they don't have to have a boss or start their own business, etc. cetera. Um, and a lot of people are also in a job, but thinking, oh, but I want to start my own thing. Let me just figure out what that's going to be. And so what happens is they look 
out, they look outside of themselves. They look for what's that next big thing? What's that opportunity? Maybe they go to a Facebook ad that says make money online doing whatever, right? But they don't align that thing with what they actually have to offer and what they enjoy. And so when that happens, you actually end up back in another job that is yeah. might be a business, but you, you actually don't enjoy it. It's again, another thing that is not really true to you. You just thought it would make you money and turns out just as hard to make money in this in this other thing you've created as it was back in maybe even harder right than back in your old job so that's why it's so important to figure out your value what you have to offer um, like what you did where we really really crystallized what is that thing that you are able to help people with and then who are those people and then on the other side of it of course the marketing the branding so you get your messaging across and they'll actually be ready to sign up and and work with you right yeah yeah. yeah. And it, it is such a, a nebulous experience that trying to navigate it by yourself, I mean, you feel caught in the fog of the moment. Mm -hmm. And what was beautiful about your program was you're coming from outside and able to reflect what's going on in my own little fog and help me move step mm -hmm. by step into the future. So now I'm very clear on my purpose. Um, I help people heal limiting mindsets and connect to their life's purpose by opening the door to their true identity. I was not able to just come out the gate with that. It was a mm -hmm. natural evolution over time yeah. of walking forward and starting to do what I felt compelled to do. And you encouraged me to do that. You jump before you're ready. You have to jump before you're you ready. You're never going steps. to feel equipped. Yes. Because the steps yes. are also what lead to clarity. Clarity doesn't come from sitting on a rock and just thinking. I mean, you can get some great light bulb moments from sitting and thinking, especially if you've been going nonstop and you never get to think. Well, then yes, but you're not going to come to know your exact clarity and mission, et cetera, just by sitting and thinking. You need to go through the steps and make changes as you move forwards. And um, yeah, that's, that's really how you get the clarity. And as a recovering perfectionist, that is another thing that can immobilize you mm -hmm. because I had this expectation that I'm not going to move forward with my, my true purpose, my mm -hmm. vocation until I know exactly what it is. And I've got a plan in place yeah, and yeah, yeah. you turned it on its head. You were like, that's not it. You don't have the plan first. You have to just jump get mm -hmm. in front of clients, you know that you're coaching, you're going to figure out what type of coaching it is, as you naturally do what it is that you do with people. So you helped me get over that internal fear and my own obstacles to get in front of clients. And as I spent time with them, I was able to see through action mm -hmm. and time, what it is that I provide people of value. Yeah. And yeah. I would not have been able to do that by myself. These are things that I'd been thinking about for years and had not been able to partner with action. Yeah, yeah. So one word you said, which I find very interesting is the jump word. You just have to jump, you need to go in. A lot of people interpret, it's completely true. A lot of people interpret that to mean you must quit your job, have no money and figure it out. But that's not yeah. what you did, right? You, you, no. you didn't just quit your job. You made sure you had something really, really solid um, mm -hmm. and continue to do both alongside each other. Right. I think everybody's situation is unique. So it's not a one size fits all answer. The core of it is true, which is you need to take action before you feel adequately prepared. Mm -hmm. You're never going to feel adequately prepared. You have to feel... Um, empowered within yourself to take the step without knowing the outcome. Mm -hmm. That is the only way real growth happens. Um, but for me, no, I am still at this point a year later working full time as an operations manager at this same software company. But what's beautiful is that environment has not changed. And yet I have dramatically mm -hmm. because the way that I'm operating in that environment feels fulfilling to me. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do it long term, but I have set myself up in a way where I'm taking consistent action in the direction of my dreams and my end goal, which is coaching full time in this arena. Um, but I'm doing it in a way that feels, again, authentic to me. Mm -hmm. To me, 
I am very passionate about using whatever resources are available to me. So for me, getting rid of the full-time job with the benefits and the Mm -hmm. salary, it felt premature. And while I probably could have just struggled it Mm -hmm. out for six months um, and paid my bills and probably accrued some debt during that, it wasn't, it wasn't the best option for me. For other people, it might be. What Mm -hmm. is a non-negotiable is partnering action with that inner drive. And for me, it was inviting in help and getting some strategic insight and then just moving forward in that direction. Yeah, the most important thing is to start moving forward, start taking action. And so many people say, oh, but I need to quit my job before I can start taking action. Or, oh, I even had people say, you know, Dalia, I really want to do career coaching with you, but I just need to figure out what I want to do first. And then I'm going to sign up. And I'm going, you're going to spend a long time trying to figure out what, what you want to do. You know, that's that's part of the action. So, yeah. Um, yeah. And I think it continues to evolve over time, just like the core components of who we are, mm-hmm. who you are today is not who you were five years ago. Mm-hmm. And it's not who you're going to be five years from now. So if you are someone who is more entrepreneurial uh, minded, like myself, like mm-hmm. yourself, that is one of the hardest things is letting go of the expectation that you're going to have the whole thing beautifully packaged mm-hmm. and figured out before you present it to the world that is not realistic. And if you wait for that, you'll never make the move. Yeah. You jump, you start partnering action with belief and you see where it goes and you just hold it all with open hands. What I'm doing now may be completely different from two years from now, but I know that if I keep making active moves that resonate with me and I don't expect that I'm going to be able to have all the answers myself, Mm -hmm. I'll end up in a place where I want to be. And that is true to me. Yeah. And you'll, you'll always end up further forward and closer to where you want to be by doing that versus sitting there and deciding, do I move forward? Do I not? I don't know. I don't know. And um, the truth is, I think these days, people who are stuck in, I don't know, actually fall backwards because the world is moving so much faster than it used to. And you said something I thought was really interesting, which was about letting go, being able to (laughs) let go of all all the things that you don't know for certain, just let go of needing to know and have that certainty. And I believe this is the lesson that um, a lot of people got during the pandemic, but a lot of people also have not yet fully managed to embrace. And maybe this is the cue to kind of embrace that lesson, which is to, which is really to embrace uncertainty and move forward yes. despite uncertain moments, not wait for the uncertainty to be over because people right. were waiting for the pandemic to be over. Now look what's going on in the world. You know, well, now we have a war. Now we have, so there's always going to be something um, yeah. and to not wait for uncertainty to go away, but rather learn to operate and continue moving forward, continue taking steps, no matter how uncertain things are. And even like I said before, embracing it and realizing like uncertainty is kind of exciting. It's it's a way, maybe things are going to turn out even better than what you imagined if you just take that step. So yeah. being able yeah. to not only survive in, in, during uncertain times, but actually thrive in uncertain times. Yeah. And a key component of that, I feel, is being able to identify how you can empower yourself within whatever situation you're in. And so Mm -hmm. for me, I was unhappy in the corporate world and I knew that it wasn't going to miraculously resolve itself. Mm -hmm. I wasn't going to suddenly wake up a month later and go, oh yeah, I'm exactly where I need to be. And I love Mm -hmm. this. I had gone through years and years of navigating that corporate environment. I saw your program. I made the active choice to empower myself. So moving from this victim mindset of this is happening to me and I'm disempowered. I have no choices. I've got bills. I got to keep working full time. Mm-hmm. Well, yes and no. Yes, I still have bills and I need steady income. And I'm able to invite in help such as yourself and take steps in a direction that makes me feel empowered. Yeah, absolutely. And when it comes down to it, we all we all have bills. It's like they say, well, every, we all have 24 hours in a day. Like you were yeah. incredibly, ridiculously busy. And yeah. 
you just knew, well, I have 24 hours just like everyone else. What am I going to do about it, right? You use the resources you have. And same thing with, with the bills. We, we all have bills. And, you know, again, we all have varying circumstances, but I don't, I don't meet anyone who's like, I have so much time, so much money, everything is perfect. <laughs> So I'm right. going to make a big change. I'm going to start my side business or I'm going to, you know, no, nobody's in that situation. So yes. you have to remember that you, you no matter what your situation is, you use what you have, you get resourceful and yeah. you focus on where you want to go and not where you are right now, which might not yes. be where you would like to be. Yeah. I'd say two core components. Uh, the conditions will never be ideal. Just yeah. let go of that let go of that expectation. It's not ever going to be ideal. And two, understanding comes in retrospect. It makes sense when you look back. It's not going to make sense in the moment. So what can you do to invite in the help you need, empower yourself within your existing construct, mm -hmm. and then take consistent steps to get to where you want to be? And that your program was pivotal for me. That was the turning point. Had I made the decision back at the lowest point mm -hmm. and just resigned myself to a corporate life that felt completely soul killing and depleting to me. I, I wouldn't even want to know where I'd be a year from now, probably really burnt out and really unhappy. So yeah, I'm, I'm mean, glad that I took the chance. Right? Yes. Yeah. I mean, even, even moving in the direction that felt real to me, I went through actual burnout. I mean, mm -hmm. real burnout at the end of last year. So just because you do start partnering action with your inner motivation does mm -hmm. not mean it's going to be smooth sailing. Yeah, it really doesn't. So that's where it's important to have what I call a pit crew. You've got to have your people around you that you're able to lean on for insight, wisdom, mm -hmm. um, reflection, and just key strategies, because realistically, you're not going to be good at everything. So you find the people who are, and you, you access them. Yep, you have to stack all the odds in your favor. And that includes your environment, that includes the people, that includes what you're reading, information. I mean, it just, whatever you can to put the odds in your favor, whatever you can do to put the odds in your favor, do it. Don't, don't think about, should I, you know, should I do this? Should I ask for help? Should I just, just get it, stack the odds on your side? And then it, that's how you're going to start moving forward and start being more successful. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, and the scary part for me first was taking the action. Okay. I am going to move forward with accelerate your ambitions. What's what Dolly is saying resonates with me. This is what I want to do, but then partnering finances with it and saying, okay, okay. I'm believing that this is the path that I need right now. I'm believing in this construct and then putting the money in, I think was so important being able to identify the need, invite in the help and then invest in yourself. That is another point that feels very scary for not mm -hmm. just me, I'm sure everybody. Um, yeah. The idea of if, investing in yourself. Yeah. Most people yeah. do it when they pay for university. They pay huge sums for the university, but the fact that right. everyone else does that too makes, I mean, what, what do you think the difference is really? Like what, what felt extra scary about this type of investing in yourself? Because it is going against the grain of society. Mm. It is expected for us to go to university yeah. and to get a piece of paper and for outside our society to tell us who we are it does not feel natural or safe to mm -hmm. allow yourself to go, no, this is actually who I am. Mm -hmm. We let life tell us who we are. But when you shift into, I'm going to tell the world who I am, I'm going to yeah. get into the career that actually resonates with me. And I'm going to invest my resources strategically to get what I need to go mm -hmm. in that direction. That's terrifying because people think you're nuts. If yeah. you know, I, I shared this decision with a few family members and, <laughs> How and did that like, go? yeah, not well, but yeah, because sure. they are operating in that mm -hmm. external construct where society tells them the steps that they're going to take. So anyone who bucks the norm and goes in a different direction, 
you're ostracized. It, Absolutely. It you know, Rachel, I was thinking about this a lot because I've actually never, every time I've invested with a coach or a program or something like that, I've never told anyone until yeah. way after the fact. Because I just, yeah. know, I mean, they just, I don't even know what they would say. They would say, you're absolutely crazy. What are you doing, et cetera. So I, I make my decision and then I tell them, you know, once I'm successful and <laughs> way later and they're like, yes. oh, that sounds still crazy, but fine. I guess you're, they see that I'm doing well. So they see that it's somehow working out. But um, right. I believe the reason it's so hard for people to do something like that is shame. So the idea mm -hmm. that someone's going to say you're stupid, that's a dumb thing to do. It's that shame. And, you know, shame is like one of the lowest human emotions possible. Everyone wants yes. to avoid it. So a lot of times people don't go for the thing that they want because they're so afraid of shame. And the same thing goes, uh, I'm not just talking about coaching, but starting your own thing. If you do that thing and you fail at it, well, that will be shameful. People will say, I told you so. People, you know, so just to avoid someone telling them, I told you so, or you're stupid, or that's dumb, just, just to avoid that, they don't go for yeah. their dream. And it's like, yeah, crazy. And of course, those exact same people, when if you if you're successful, are going to think you're amazing and say, wow, you know, you've done all this, etc. Um, or maybe they don't even notice how well you've done. They're like, okay, as long as you're happy, <laughs> right? But it, I mean, it doesn't matter what other people say, you should just be focusing on what what do you want to do, right? Because don't forget, they're bringing in all their and own isn't limiting it? beliefs whenever you do something, they're thinking about, would I do that? No. And so right away, they, they shame you for it. It's, it's not nothing personal. It's just, you know, the way they reflect their beliefs onto you. Right. And isn't it interesting as a society, we will hump, uh, uh, lump shame and judgment mm -hmm. onto putting action into your dreams, as opposed to doing the thing mm -hmm. that everybody else is doing that feels like it's killing you. We're not shaming the people that are going, exactly. I'm working 80 hours a week and I'm living for the weekend and I'm slowly killing my body and I don't really enjoy anything that I do, that but this is what we all do. That's, yeah, that's yeah. the American dream. You, you sell your soul and you, you, you get the, the, the cookie cutter mm -hmm. here. This is what it looks like. Rachel, I don't know how we got to this point, but I, I think it's almost, it's a, it's a huge discussion and something that's worth thinking about. Like, why is it that our definition of, you know, success and failure, why is failure not being a depressed version of yourself or a version of yourself that's going through the motions? I mean, that is failure uh, as opposed to success being a, a certain type of job with a certain type of income going to just, yeah, why are our definitions of success and failure are very strange. And I'm not yes. 100% sure how we got to the point. this point. I have many theories, but um, <laughs> you have to really examine your definition of success and failure. And actually, I saw another coach talking about that. She says she measures her success on three pillars. You know, a lot of people say, well, should I measure my success based on my happiness level or based on my money? Well, both of them can be measures of success, mm -hmm. right? So she was saying for her, it's time, money, and what was the other one? and impact, right? So as yeah. long as those, one of those or two of those, or hopefully all three of those are going well, okay, she is successful, right? But you shouldn't just base it on one of those. And I even talk to people who don't feel like they have any of those, but they still feel like they need to stay where they are, even though they're underpaid, not making an impact, and don't have any time, and they're not happy, but, but they just feel like, well, I can't really go elsewhere. Yeah. You hit on something so foundational. You have to define the parameters of success or they will mm -hmm. be defined for you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, it has been amazing. So amazing having you on here. And I know once we start talking, we can go on for a very long time. <laughs> so I just want to ask you, uh, is there anything else, any key message on top of all the key messages you've already shared that you want to, to tell whoever is watching today choose to believe in the dream in your heart whether it is getting into a completely different career whether it's starting your own thing believe that if you have the ability to conceive of it you can do it and investing in something like dahlia's program is the first step invite in the help choose to invest in yourself believe that it is true it's in your heart release it 
we don't need more people that are working themselves to death in jobs that don't resonate with them or reflect mm -hmm. their true identity. We need more people who are passionate, alive, and truly impacting the world. So show up. And it always starts with showing up for yourself first. And this is a key way to do it. Thank you so much for saying that, because I, I really, I agree with you. We don't need more people who aren't happy with what they're doing, who are dragging themselves around. And these are the people that none of us like to work with either. And let's let's not become one of those one of those people, right? Imagine if everyone loved what they're doing and you have to interact with them for whatever business related thing and they're just glowing and vibrant and okay, how are you today? Let's help you out, et cetera, because they're actually happy about what it is that they're doing, right? Exactly. The world would be a completely different place. Exactly. Thank you so much, Dahlia, for everything that you have done for me. And thank you for believing in your dream to create this beautiful coaching program. You had to do this You're yourself. You're amazing, too. Rachel. Thank you, you had so to walk in that. it yourself too <laughs> for sure us did. to be yes. able to do it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it's not easy. It's not easy. So thank you so much for being somebody in my life who has been inspiring and empowering. And it's, it's just wonderful seeing you do what you're meant to, to be doing. It makes me feel like I can do the same. Thank you so much, Rachel. And I think, yeah, your, your energy also inspires me. And I can tell you're, you're really living from your higher self and working towards embodying that higher self version of, uh, version of you. And I think that's also um, a key point. It's not just about getting that job that you like, it's about getting to be the person that you actually want to show up as every day. Yeah. yeah. All right, thank you so much. My pleasure, thank you for everything. See ya.